Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about what might be the best, the only, definitely the best, way to visualize parent-child hierarchies in Power BI. Of course, I am talking about performance flow visual from XViz. Now, XViz is part of the portfolio developed by Lumel that greatly augments capabilities of Power BI, and you could learn about it by going to lumel.com, or you could go to XViz, which is a dedicated site where you could learn about all different super powerful, super cool visuals available from that company. Now, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of documentation available, both on XViz site and also on YouTube. There is a really well-developed XViz performance flow playlist available on XViz YouTube channel. So the purpose of this video is not to regurgitate or basically tell you what you can easily find out on on, on, on YouTube or uh, in documentation. However, there's a couple of quirky things that uh, I think would be important for everybody to know as you start using performance flow. So I'm just gonna highlight some of the things I really like and some of the interesting use cases for this visual. Hopefully we'll keep it nice and short. So XViz is a custom visual, so it doesn't come bundled with Power BI. However, you can get it from the app source or you could get it by clicking on the three dots and say import uh, get more visuals. Now, remember how I said that performance flow is really an amazing and maybe the only visual in the Power BI portfolio of visuals that understands parent-child hierarchy out of the box? So uh, what that means is, let's take a look at the table we're gonna be using for this visual, which in my case, the table is salesperson. So you will see that the way this table is set up is it uses this parent-child hierarchy. So we have a salesperson ID, then we have the person's manager ID, that's super cool. The other thing that you could do with performance flow is you could do image. So if you wanna display images, uh, in my case, I will have a picture of the employee. And what you can also do is you can have a dotted line. So what's really cool about performance flow is you're able to manage and visualize not just one, you can visualize a bunch of different relationships and you can also create custom links. Again, some of the stuff is gonna be out of this introduction, kind of high level overview video, but I will probably revisit and get more deeper into this topic with subsequent visuals. This visual is really cool and deserves, to, um, deserves a lot of time under the sunshine. But what we need to remember is, so for this person's here, Charles Delaney, we have Charles ID, we have his manager ID, and we also have a dotted line ID so we can model these complicated relationships. In terms of data preparation, there is one more thing that you guys probably want to add to your data set, and that is the salesperson path. So here we're using a path command, and what path command does, it's a DAX function that takes the, the ID of the person and the parent ID, the two columns, and it creates a path for how many steps I have to go through between the top of the hierarchy, in our case, the VP of sales, all the way to the individual salesperson. So you can see how that path is created. So for the VP, the path only contains one element, which is VP's ID, and then his direct reports are gonna have just two elements, and then their direct reports will have three elements. You can see how these IDs are separated by a pipe character. So let's take a look what it takes to set up this visual. So the first thing is we have a hierarchy field. That's where the ID of the employee goes in. Then the parent field, in our case, that's gonna be a manager ID. And then you have values. So this would normally be uh, things that describe the employee. So in, I, in, in my case, it's a title, it's an image, it's the name, and also a dotted line. So I hope I didn't, mis didn't, I didn't misspeak. So that goes into the fields bucket and then in the values bucket are gonna go the numeric values so that if you wanna display sales, units, headcount, average sales by salesperson, so basically any kind of measures, so that would go into your values. You can also do a spark line here, so you can do a trend for some of this as well on this card. So what is a performance flow at high level? It's basically a way to display a hierarchy of different card. And you can have all this information that was set up here to customize the look and feel of these cards. This tool, again, is extremely powerful. The customization options are virtually limitless. You can customize just about anything. Again, I don't wanna make it one hour video, so maybe as I revisit this product in the next several weeks, I will go deeper in some of these options. But all you need to remember for now is your customization options are very, very rich. It's a very robust and mature product. 
So let us start interacting with our visual. So here we have John, who is the VP of sales, and he sits at the top of the reporting hierarchy in our case. You see that he has 102 nodes. So uh, performance flow allows us to configure what we would like to see here. If you click on display, and again, you will see a lot of different options here. So if you go to navigation, you have an option to show node count all or just the immediate. So if you show immediate, that's gonna say, hey, I have nine direct reports. If you say all, that's gonna show you all of the direct reports or all the reports that roll up to John. So in our case, we're gonna leave it at all. And then now I could click on this number and you could see all of the John's direct reports. So let me zoom in. We got Sarah, Karen, Karen, Barbara, Michael, and so forth. So that's pretty cool. You can also use, if you have thousands of elements or hundreds of elements here, you could use a search capability to quickly find the node or the card that you're looking for. Or you can also use filter capability to filter out based on values and other things available that we used in our setup. So just to make things a little bit easier for us to see, let's take a look at how this card is set up. So if you click on map fields, then here you see that we're using name as a title, we're using title as subtitle, and we're using image as an image. And it's showing our, I think in our case, it's actually fields here. So probably should say fields instead of measures. And then you can create custom links. So here I'm using dotted light field in our data set to show that we need to create an extra link and it will show, I'll show you what that looks like later. And then you can see a bunch of other things to customize appending, uh, appearance and other things. So again, this, this has a ton of features. I don't wanna make this video too long, so I'm gonna skip this for now. The next question is, in terms of showing the numbers, what does it look at? And then if you click on a KPI, it's gonna show you all of the measures, all of the values that are available to display. The tool also will do automatic variance calculation. I'll display it here. So right now I don't have a good variance, so I'm gonna have it as none, but uh, rest assured you could have, you can pack a lot of information in this small card. Now let's talk about the quirks. So the challenge is, and some of the little bit of frustration you might experience when you start working with the tool is that when you just bring your measures into the values, they will not appear on this report until you traverse all the way into the least, you know, into the child level of your visualization. So out of the box, what you might see is you, dra you, dra you, dra you drag a measure into the visuals and you could see at the lowest level, but as you roll up, then those values are gonna show up as blank. So how do you fix this? The way you fix it is you have to uh, work around Power BI limitations because Power BI really does not understand parent-child hierarchies anymore. And if you go back into the analysis services world, you know what I'm talking about when I say anymore. So you have to add a little bit of sophistications into your measures. So what I have done was, instead of just having a normal sales measure, which in our case just does, you know, let's say some amount. So that's what you would normally do. I created a sales performance flow measure that looks like this. And the way this works is I'm still gonna calculate my sales, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually basically traverse my hierarchy and say, hey, filter my salesperson and then bringing everything that contains the, the value of the person who is selected on this, on this card. So basically what this does is gonna give me the, um, it's gonna sum up everything for the current person and then all of the people who are underneath him regardless of how many levels, level, levels below they are. So it's gonna be this command here. And that's what I had to do for all of my measures if I wanted them to show up in this visual. So I have units, performance flow, sales performance flow, and now this visual works very well. So a couple of things you could do. Uh, one of my favorite features is ability to add conditional formatting. So here I've added a conditional formatting where I'm trying to highlight the card and I'm using a left side of the border based on average sales by a salesperson. So if an average sale is less than $8 million, I wanna show it in red. If it's less than between eight and 14 million, I wanna show it in yellow. And if it's over $14 million, I wanna show it in green. So now what you could do is you could drill in and you could see how different cars have different colors. And even though her ent entire org is selling $162 million, this is for Barbara, if you look at the average sales per salesperson, it's only 11.6 million. 
And if you click into her org, then if we traverse it, you will see that nobody is really making uh, over $14 million. So this calculation is correct. And the last piece I wanted to show you was this dotted line. So again, everything here is configurable, location, fonts, colors, all of the stuff you can modify. Don't wanna make this video too long. So let's drill into James and see what his hierarchy looks like. So here we see Charles. Charles reports into James and you can see this reporting hierarchy. And then also with the orange line, we see his dotted line into the David. So I can create very elaborate and complicated situations and hierarchies here. So if there's dotted line scenarios, if there's sub-processes, depending on what you're trying to model, you can create a singular way that represents the pretty complicated relationships within your organizations or within your process flows. So to summarize, we're able to put our parent-child hierarchy to work without having to create additional levels. Another thing that we normally do when we try to coerce parent-child relationships into Power BI, this is an extremely powerful visual. You can customize it to unlimited degree. You can model, you can use it to model very sophisticated hierarchies. And it's just a really nice visual to work with. It looks great and you can add your custom images to it to make it look very professional. So this is uh, one of the first in a long rows of videos that we're planning to do based on the Lumel's product portfolio. So we'll be doing deep dive and more XVs charts, but we also will be doing a lot of content based around Inferiver suite of products. So stay tuned and I'll see you soon on the next one.